Today on Hands-On Photography, we're going to talk with Mr. David Bergman. Yes, I get to ask David Bergman a question, the awesome, amazing photographer and Canon explorer of light, about some sports photography. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. We're just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands-On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always, and boy, do I mean that, literally. Ooh. <laughs> Been sitting here, having a good old time, sitting down with today's guest, amazing photographer that's been in this game for oh just a handful of decades he's been shooting forever y'all and he's also a canon explorer of light who am i talking about mr david bergman how you doing my man <laughs> Yeah, what's going on, buddy? How are you? It's so cool to be here with you. Finally, we finally worked this out. And, right, uh, right. I, 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 I am so honored and thrilled to have you on. I've been a fan of yours for quite a while. Met you through my buddy, our mutual buddy, Mr. Steve Brazel. Um, does a lot of concert right. photography. You do concert photography, amongst other things. I mean, you are concert photographer, you're sports photographer, you educator. Um, what else can we add to that list? Are you going to be a book <laughs> author next? You're going to be a TV show star next? What's next? <laughs> I've done most of those things. Yeah, no, it's been fun. I mean, you know, it's you make me sound really old, but it's it's fun. I mean, I have been doing this a long time. And, you know, longevity is a wonderful thing in this business. And uh, technology has allowed us to even do this longer than I probably could have in earlier generations. So it's uh, it's definitely been a fun career so far. I love it. I love it. This is I, I'm, I wanted to get you on because this show, I like to try to sit with folks and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make them a better photographer or a better post processor because they all go hand in hand and being able to have someone like you on a seasoned veteran, if you will, that's got a lot of experience. I'm sure there are some nuggets that you could share with our, with our audience because our audience are tend to, they tend to be the beginner folks. And sometimes there's the intermediate folks that are, you know, starting to find their way and, and, and get into a couple more projects and start to, you know, grow their business, if you will. And, uh, they're just going to need a couple little tips here and there. And for you, I wanted to reach out regarding the world of sports photography. I, I, I've had people ask me about it and say, well, hey, how do I get into sports photography? And uh, first first thing I tell them is, hey, uh, go somewhere and shoot for free like a rec league and, you know, get all the permissions, you know, go to the rec leagues, go to the high schools and make sure you had a permission to do so and, and just and shoot for free because they're not going to pay you right out the gate, but it's going to allow you to sort of, you know, get your feet wet and, and cut your teeth and, and learn some do's and don'ts of the craft. You've been doing sports photography for a long time and just and super prominent. I'm talking Sports Illustrated prominent folks. So I know you have a, a thing or two up your sleeve that you can share. What What is one? What is your go to tip? for people wanting to get started with sports photography or if they're in sports photography, what is your, what is your go-to tip to really take it up to the next level? For sure. Yeah, no, thanks for saying all that. I mean, just to, to add on to what you just said a minute ago, mm -hmm. uh, before we get to that tip, I mean, I, I definitely couldn't agree with you more about starting small because access means a lot in whether it's sports, I shoot, you know, I shot sports for many years. I shoot a lot of concerts, you know, big arena stows, stadium shows all around the world. And yeah, people often say, how do I get to shoot the Super Bowl or how do I get to shoot, you know, Bon Jovi in a stadium? And and you're not going to do that right out of the gate, out of the gate, but you've got to have images to show yeah. and your work has to be good. Your work has to be solid. So you can get access to your friends probably in a band, right? Or yep. your kid might be in little league or, you know, all of the above. Right. And so you can get that kind of access. And I'll be honest with you. I've been in meetings with high level picture editors at a magazine, like sports illustrated, for example, and somebody will come in with images that they think are great because it's of somebody famous, right? Maybe it's 
a president or, you know, mm-hmm. somebody, a celebrity or something like that, but it's not a very good picture, but they think it's great because it's that person. Mm. And the, the person you're meeting with has seen a million pictures of that person, right? So to them, they're not impressed that it's the president or it's Bon Jovi or whoever it is. They're looking at the photograph. And so if you can make good, high quality images at a little league game or at a, a concert at a club with horrible lighting, if you can do that, doing the stadiums is easy. Right. right. So that leads into what, you know, what we're talking about today, which is, you know, I, 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 tips and things that you can do to really start to improve your photography. And with sports photography, any kind of action photography in general, what I've always liked to do is make my subjects look larger than life. Right. Mm. Because that's that's the goal is that when it's a, an athlete, you want to make them look like the best athlete in the world. Right. Even if they're not, you want to make them look that way. Right. And so. Obviously, you have to have all the, f- the foundation has to be there, right? The exposure, focus, all of those things, anticipating the action. Those are all important. But there's one other small thing that I think is overlooked by a lot of people that you, anybody out there watching this can put into practice immediately. And the thing is, when you're photographing somebody at their eye level or above, mm-hmm. they look average right if you're at the same level as they are they look the same as you right and that shows through the lens through the camera in the pictures it shows right so if you're looking down on somebody they really kind of look small right if you're looking at eye level they look the same as you but these athletes even if it's a little league you know kid if it's a Uh five-year-old if you get down lower and look up at them even if it's with a long lens farther back if you're looking up at somebody subliminally that person looks larger than life and i can show you some examples you know some pictures mm-hmm. of at all levels you know from the super bowl down to little league right and it works across the board so i don't know if we want to show some of those pictures yeah, but, I, but i, I, I definitely appreciate give you, an idea. you i appreciate you mentioning that because we've talked about just camera height before in in some of our portrait sessions and portrait tutorials here on the show uh because Say I wanted to take a photograph of a of a, a female model, if you will. Mm-hmm. Me shooting above her eye level is it can come off as quite demeaning. You know, it yeah, it, it really absolutely. just shrinks her down and just make her smaller than what she really needs to be. And and as a photographer, that's not cool. I should recognize yep. that. But at least getting on eye level is like I am woman. I am equal to this person looking at this this image, too. So, yeah, I I really do appreciate you mentioning that. And this is true across the board with really with everything, because I I was a newspaper photographer back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And when you you can editorialize in a picture subliminally just by changing your camera height. right? Right. So if it's somebody coming out of a courthouse, right, somebody who was arrested and coming out of a courthouse and you get up a little bit higher than they are and you shoot down on them. The viewer, without realizing it, sees that person as smaller, uh-huh. right? And maybe it influences people. Yep. But if you get down, you know, if it's, like I said, a big a celebrity or, a, you know, a pro wrestler or somebody, <laughs> you know, and they're coming out of the courthouse and you get really low and look up at them yeah. and they're surrounded by people and cameras and all that, they're, they're the center of the action and they're larger than life. And, and it really does... Want. <laughs> subliminally make that difference. So as a, you know, I'm not talking about doing it in a manipulative way, but as a sports photographer, any, any kind of action, like I said, whether it's your kids or professional sports, you have that choice. And look, I'll be honest. It's, it's, it's physically demanding to do that. I mean, my knees are shot from 30 years of doing this, <laughs> you know? but, but I always did it. And I would look at the other photographers on the sidelines, even at that level who were just standing because it's easier and I get it. And, you know, people have physical issues and some people maybe can't do it. But if you can kneel down or even get way down and lay down on the ground, which isn't mm. always possible. But if you can do that, man, the images are just going to be so much better. If that's your goal is to make an athlete look larger than life. Nice. Now, we do have yeah. an image uh, of yours that you, you shot as a football game, which is my favorite sport. And it happens yeah. to be uh, one of my favorite teams here. So let me pull that up and let you talk about this image here. This is oh, there just, you go. 
<sighs> but which one is your, are you a Packers or an I'm Eagles I'm a Packers fan. fan. I'm a Packers right. fan. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, look, this is a good moment of action already, right? So obviously it's got all the foundations there, right? It's mm-hmm. like I said, it's exposed properly. The focus is correct. I'm using the right lens at the, at the right moment. Then, you know, obviously the player holding on for dear life there and uh, and he's just being- Bless his heart. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> obviously no love loss for the Eagles there. But, nope. uh, um, so um, it's funny because I didn't even know that when I sent you that picture. But uh, but yeah, but you can tell also if you can't, the way to tell the angle that somebody's shooting, especially with a long lens, this is probably a 400 or a 600. But the way you can tell is by looking at the ground. Right. So if I was higher up, the grass would take up more of the frame. It would be higher up in the frame. And I've got some other examples as you can see a little in a few minutes, right. but you can see the difference there. If the grass is all the way, the ground is all the way down at the bottom and it's just a little sliver, that's because I'm almost at the same level as the grass. If I was laying on the ground, the grass would be basically uh, you know, perpendicular to my lens. Gotcha. So you really wouldn't see much of the grass. And even besides the looking up, at the person and making them look taller. Besides that, getting rid of that grass also helps because if the grass takes up half the frame, it's just distracting and it's right. it's not it's not that interesting. You either have to have all grass, like if you were looking straight down, or you have to have as little grass as possible. That's so, my feeling. So even you're shooting, we'll say like a 400 or 600, even if you're shooting, say, a 200 millimeter, it's still the same principle with this, correct? Even a 14 millimeter, right. right? If you're shooting wide angle, if you can get right under that person, and if they're jumping, let's say, or something like that, I've done portraits like that of an athlete, you have them fly through the air and you're lighting it and using you know, a stadium as the background or those, you've seen pictures like that before. If you just look at them straight and you can see the ground and you can see like too much of the empty stadium or whatever, it's just not as interesting. If you get really low and they're flying up over your head and all you see is the sky Mm -hmm. and maybe the the lights from the stadium, you know, just in the, just as a graphical element framing them, that's, that takes a, a, a really good picture and makes it outstanding. Oh my goodness. This is just... I get chills when I see stuff like this, again, because I'm a football fan, but then seeing this as a photographer and, and understanding, you know, you locked this this exposure. I mean, you just nailed it. The perfect shutter speed. There's the perfect amount of compression because of that lens. So they're separated from the background. And it's just, oh, man, I am so yeah. jealous of you to be able to shoot <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> it's fun. I don't do too much of that anymore, but I'd certainly spent many years doing Super Bowls and Olympics and all of that kind of stuff. So it's it's definitely fun. I do miss having that much action. The thing is, I, I do a lot of concert photography now and mm-hmm. concert photography. I shoot it like a sporting event where to me, it's all about the action and catching those those little split second moments that, you know, maybe there's you know, there might be a handful of them throughout a two hour show. But just those little five hundredths of a second or a look that somebody gives or, right. yes, a jump or, you know, somebody, you know, I, I've, I've shot young bands where the kid, you know, the kids are jumping off the amplifiers or, you know, those kinds. I mean, that that's what I live for. I love those kinds of moments with with Bon Jovi. I did so many pictures of John Bon Jovi flying in the air because he would do you know he would do a big jump at the end of a song and and i made sure i was in the right position with a wide angle lens usually right to look straight up at him because i could get right on stage and get right underneath him basically and he would jump and he always said he always used to tell me he said you made me look so much higher than i actually am and it's like, <laughs> oh, you, you did the jump i just captured it you know I, but uh, but the lower the camera is the higher the person is. And it just makes all the difference in the world. That is outstanding. And we'll have some more images here in our show notes. And Mr. Victor will pop them up on the screen for us as well, because Mr. Victor is our awesome editor and awesome with the capital A. <laughs> now, before go. I let you go, I, I wanted to ask if there's anything you'd like to share that you've been working on or, or, or um, some upcoming projects and things like that that you may have going on with Canon or I know you, you, you're doing a lot with your YouTube channel and I watch it every single week. Ask David Bergman. Right. Ask David Bergman. <laughs> yeah, that's been a fun show. That's for for Adorama, um, you know, that I do a weekly show for them. And basically, I just take photo questions. That's at askdavidbergman.com. And then I pick sort of the best ones um, to answer each week on the show. And I get a, so many great questions. It's hard to get to all of them. But uh, but the, the biggest thing that I'm the most excited about right now is that I've been doing these uh, really unique workshops mm-hmm. um, because I have. I do. Uh, I am a concert photographer. I'm a tour photographer. Right now, the last tour I was on after Bon Jovi 
I've been out with Luke Combs, who's a huge country uh, music superstar, and I'm his tour photographer. And he's been nice enough to allow me to do this. And very few artists would let would let anybody do this. But I, I'm actually running a live concert photography workshop. Nice. A series of workshops all around the country as we are on tour, um, and basically at at some of the shows, um, I'm a, I can have five or six photographers out who uh, want to do a workshop with me. Now this isn't a Luke Combs experience; it's not a VIP with Luke Combs. He has really nothing to do with it, other than it's the background that we use for teaching. So you right. spend the day with me um, at the venue. We have a, our own room backstage. And I teach a workshop all day long. I teach you basically the everything you know about photographing concerts, which really is action photography. It's the same, you mm -hmm. know, sports, action, concerts. Um, and, you know, from and I, and I take all levels of photographers. You obviously have to have at least, you know, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. I'm not going to mm -hmm. you can't bring your phone camera. <laughs> but if you're, you know, shoot like and, I've, and I have pro photographers, too, who also want to you know, uh, get better with shooting that kind of work. So you come out and you spend the day with me at the show. And then that night you get to shoot the concert with me. And it really is a unique experience because people have been, have been asking me my whole career, how can I shoot concerts, you know, big right. arena concerts. And there's really no access to that unless you're a working media photographer who, and you know, there's a big show coming to your town and you get assigned to do it. There are some like music blogs and things that sometimes will get access, but they get a couple of songs and then they're out. With me, I have all access, so therefore you have all access too. Nice. But it really is a teaching experience. You, most of the day is spent with me, locked in a room while I talk and have slideshows and and you know work with you to improve your photography. And then at the end of the end of all of that, you get to actually put it into practice at a real live big arena concert. These are arena shows; they're all sold out. Um, so it's really a cool experience that is unique and that nobody else really has this kind of access. So. Um, so thank you, Luke, for allowing me to do that. His management's been so nice uh, for that. But yeah, so we did those a lot in 2019. Obviously, 2020, they all got shut down. Um, yeah, we, we are, won't speak about 2020. <laughs> yeah, we just put that in the books and forget it all happened. But uh, I'm hopeful that by the fall of 2021 of this year, that we will be back doing those. So that's, uh, I call it shoot from the pit, which is like the photo pit, but it's a play on words with shoot from yep. the hip. Yeah. And um so it's shootfromthepit.com is that website. And I have an email list. And when I do announce new dates and cities, it'll go out to the email list, usually a day or two before it goes to everybody else. Cause they sell quickly. Cause it's really, I can only have a handful of people out at each of these shows. So that's right. been so much fun for me because to be able to literally teach, maybe not literally, but to teach everything I know about that I've gathered from these 30 years and in an intimate environment, one on, you know, one on, you know, me with just a handful of people, um, and then to throw them out into the show and, and watch them, you know, their head explode a little bit. And, uh, you know, and I'll walk up to you during the show and be like, what are you doing? Are you, how's your exposure? And, you know, so it's, it's super fun to do and people just tend to love it. And so it's my way of sort of giving back the, the, that, the, the photo world and the photo industry has given me so much. And yeah. at this point in my career, I'm not, I'm not too worried about sharing all my secrets, you know, at this point, you know, I love so, it. uh, so I'm happy to do it. And it's, it's just been super fun to do. So that's, that's sort of my big project that I can't wait to get back on the road and start doing those again. I've been locked up here in the studio for uh, <laughs> over a year. So I need to get on an airplane again and a tour bus. Yes. Oh, tell yeah, me about it. Tell wait. me about it. Can't wait. This, this is just, this has just been awesome to see your energy come through here. The screen here's just, just you, you, you're loving it and you're excited. And, oh, I, I, Dude, I've been watching you for years, and so I'm happy to finally, uh, finally be on here. I, I, I was telling you before, I, I wish you had asked me earlier, but it happened when it was supposed to happen, so I'm, I'm glad to be here, buddy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, hopefully I'll be able to get you on here again in the, in the near future where you can share yet another tip, if that's okay. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Mr. Bergman. Thanks, Ant. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode. Oh, man, did, did, you, did you see that energy? Did you feel that energy? Oh, goodness. I love that stuff. Oh, I'm so grateful to be able to sit down and chat with Mr. Bergman and other great photographers here in this community and be able to get some knowledge dropped on me as well as some knowledge dropped on you, the hands on photography listener. Thank you all for the continued support of the show. If this was your first time checking out the show, go ahead and consider subscribing. You know, check us out on the website, twit.tv 
slash hop that's twit.tv slash hop you'll see all of our subscription options over there and if you're an apple podcast user i would really appreciate it if you would give me a good old review and rating five stars or not discouraged okay just saying <laughs> leave me a review and rating it really does help get the show discovered by other folks interested in the world of photography and also give me a follow over on social media i enjoy interacting there it's uh ant underscore Pruitt over on Twitter. And I'm also ant underscore Pruitt over on Instagram. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and get on up out of here and allow you to pick up your camera and get on out there and create and dominate. And thank you again to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week. All right, folks, safely create and dominate. Y'all take care. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations. 